Mercy Sparks is a comic book series that relishes in violence, irreverence, and all things heavy metal. But when you look beyond the juvenile and rebellious indulgences, the series plays with quite a few mature themes. Sexuality and desires, tragic irony and fate, the abuse of power and religion. But of all the themes present, none stand out quite as much as this. The illusion of choice. But what do I mean when I mention the masterfully crafted narrative in the most memorable, mal-mannered comic book series, Mercy Sparks? Miraculously, many might make their own interpretation, but I made my own. There's not enough people with originality, so here I am to save the day, Janiac. A bit of fair warning, this comic book series is not for kids. It contains strong language, graphic violence, sexual themes, and honestly, some things haven't quite aged well. For the sake of this video, I won't be showing any of the more adult stuff, and I will also refrain from any major spoilers in case you adults want to read it. Anyway, Mercy Sparks was born in the land of Sheol, a strange place between heaven, hell, and purgatory. Against her will, she was sent to our world, charged with a mission from God, a devil girl secretly living amongst us. Mercy now hunts rogue angels hiding on earth, doing heaven's dirty work. That's the synopsis the comic book gives, but trust me, there's a lot more going on. For starters, we have a protagonist, who I'm sure by now you know is named Mercy Sparks. If I had to describe her personality, I'd say she's a cross between the hedonistic and hypersexual Faith Lahani. What are friends for? I mean, I'm sorry, it's just all the sweating nightly, side by side action you never put in for a little after hours, uh? And the antagonistic and foul mouthed Revy. A real man takes room, but if you don't even have the balls to keep up with a woman, then I'm not gonna try and force you. But what I think sets Mercy apart from the other bad girls is that her battle-hardened attitude doesn't entirely come from a place of insecurity. In fact, Mercy seems pretty confident in herself and her capabilities, which is a great attribute to have when you're the main character of an action series. Mercy's tasked with fighting, defeating, and capturing fallen angels that hide on Earth. And though she has a vast array of abilities like super strength, durability, rapid healing, a razor sharp tail, and the ability to change into a human form, she can't fight them alone. Along the way, she meets a human named Hank who helps her by creating various types of gadgets, my favorite being the metal mixtapes. The guy literally weaponizes music, how could I not love that? Each gadget has its own strengths and weaknesses when dealing with different types of angelic beings. Speaking of angelic, something you'll notice right away when looking at Mercy are her tattoos. At first glance, they seem like a neat little attribute to make her design stand out. But then you look at what they are, and you begin to wonder, why would a devil have angelic tattoos? Pearly gates, angel wings, stars and clouds, not very devilish. That is until you consider the fact that Mercy is a total rebel. So, if devils are evil and rebellion is also evil, then a rebellious devil would be... good? Right? Yeah, the comic plays with this idea of duality very often. But what keeps the series from becoming nothing more than stale and repetitive symbolism is Mercy's feelings about the situation she's in. Despite being a competent fighter, despite all of her witty remarks while in combat, Mercy doesn't actually enjoy fighting. At the end of the day, she just sees it as a job, and much like many of our real-world blue-collar jobs, it doesn't bring her any satisfaction, it doesn't edify her as a person, or deliver any closure to past traumas. It's just something she has to do. Or does she? The ability to make our own decisions based on reason, morals, and ethics is one of the quintessential parts of being human. But what if those morals and reasonings were simply given to you, rather than you choosing them for yourself? By blindly following expectations, are you truly making your own decisions? 
And if said expectations lead you to doing something horrible, should you be held responsible? The illusion of choice is a very prominent theme in Mercy Sparks, and this seems to go hand in hand with the series' deeply Judeo-Christian religious setting. It should be noted that despite being rather sacrilegious, the comic tends to comment on religion rather than simply criticizing it. It'd be so easy to just say, if a higher power knows our future, then how much free will do we really have? So instead, the series asks us if our fate is determined by things outside of our control. Our families, our social class, and where we grew up. And if it is, then is our fate carved out from the get-go, or are we able to change it? Through the first part of the comics, Mercy goes along with everything under the impression that she has no choice, because her orders are from heaven. Even though she's never been there, she's been conditioned to believe that heaven is serious business, and all orders are completely outside of her control. But once she discovers she's being lied to, you'd think that she'd forget about the whole thing, or try to find a way out. But no. Mercy actually continues being Heaven's bounty hunter. At first, I thought this was a gigantic oversight, until a bit later in the comic, where we're shown that Mercy copes with her lack of freedom by pretending not to care. Instead of attempting to escape or challenge the more difficult parts of her life, she chooses to remain oblivious and avoid responsibility. So of course she's just going to go along with what she's told by a higher power. Interesting that even though Mercy gives off the impression that she's a bad girl that doesn't play by the rules, she's very quick to follow orders rather than think for herself. Again, under the impression that this is what she's supposed to be doing, and this is her choice. So, what do you think? I know this isn't my usual video format, but I wanted to try something different since it's a comic book series, especially one that's still ongoing. It's hard to talk about this comic without spoiling anything that's very integral, so hey, if you're a fan of horror movies, heavy metal, punk rock fashion, and commentaries on religion, then look no further. But remember, it's not for kids. Not a lot of people know about this comic book, so I wanted to show it some love this Halloween. And if you want to show this channel some love, be sure to check out the merchandise. Links in the description below. A big thank you to everyone who's been supporting it. Oh my goodness, we got a lot of purchases this week. Uh, thank you guys, please. I really appreciate it. While you're at it, please subscribe to my backup channel, Janiac Tunier. Links down below. I made it just in case anything happens to this channel. I had a lot of fun rereading this comic for the video, so if you want a deeper analysis, let me know in the comments section below. Until then, I'll leave you with this. Oh!